compadre G, it's me, your old skifozo, BB the Bozo. With an offer you can't refuse. We're gonna bring you a complete collection of the White House basement tapes, courtesy of the Republican Party. What a party, haha. <laughs> You're gonna get all the greatest themes of the Nixon years, including this classic hit. One other thing I probably should tell you, because if I don't, they'll probably be saying this about me too. We did get something, a gift, after the election. A man down in Texas heard Pat in the radio mention the fact that she doesn't have a mink coat. And believe it or not, the day before we left on this campaign trip, we got a message from the Union Station in Baltimore saying they had a package for us. We went down to get it. You know what it was? It was a little, just a little less than $10,000. Every cent of that, incidentally, was in government bonds. And I just want to say this right now, that regardless of what they say about it, we're going to keep it. Yes, corporations have been governed to Dick Nixon for years, and that's why they pick an old Nixon bagman like me. But listen, hey, Paisan, you said now you're also going to get this beautiful speech. When I was inaugurated for a second term this past January 20th, I made, gave each member of my cabinet and each member of my senior White House staff a special four-year calendar with each day marked to show the number of days remaining to the administration. In the inscription on each calendar, I wrote these words. The end justifies the means. Two wrongs make a right. I should come first and this nation, second. Blah! That's so beautiful, it makes me sick. But you're also going to get something that old fungal Sarika ain't never going to get no way, no how, no time. The two tapes did exist. I think I know what is on these tapes from having listened to some. And I can assure you that those tapes will prove these things without question. First, with regard to the tape of June 20th, as you may recall, it was a five-minute telephone conversation with the former Attorney General John Mitchell. John, I called to reconstruct the evidence. Richard, do you remember the party you had? Certainly. I know damn well who did what to whom under what circumstances. I saw this thing coming. The call girl bed me. I know. You walked into one there. <laughs> and I congratulate you, sir, for having such a lively uh, uh, staff. I have domestic problems. I had a few problems in 1968. I'm sorry. What the hell happened? Well, I was, shall we say, a rather active vice president. I had a firm staff, and I stuck it out. I had been spending the uh, uh, better part of the previous week uh, trying to smooth the situation over to the point where that I could stay as husband and wife. Uh, She'll come across white and make all kinds of excuses. You ought to do the same thing. I can't. I lack adequate intelligence. Now, turning to the Watergate matter. I was, I was hoping that would come up. You, John Mitchell, must take responsibility for those mistakes. I disagree violently. You can be very sure that this conversation was recorded for purposes of blackmail. Anything wrong? Let's not discuss it any further. That was what was on that tape. Turning to April 15th, the conversation referred to there was at the end of the process in which Mr. Dean came in to tell me what he had told the U.S. attorneys that day. Mr. Dean, three weeks ago, I spoke to you about the our policy for meeting it. I didn't know much about it. When I spoke to you, I indicated that had turned the into a major crisis. Hunt has been promised executive clemency. I asked to help deal with this son of a there are money demands being made by the seven convicted defendants. We'll make a very substantial contribution to our... But there is much more to be done. 
first. The fifth step involves but we will have to plan for it more carefully. Obviously, this area would have to be researched. Nothing we do can succeed, however, without the full cooperation of... Mr. Haldeman, Mr. Ehrlichman, all of you must endure real hardship. For my part, I pledge to do everything in my power to... all the American people. I intend to... the American people on a regular basis. Let me conclude by restating our overall objective. It can be summed up in one word. That word is... And you're going to fall right on your labanza when you hear this. Listen good. I have a quality which uh, is... Uh, I guess I must have inherited it from my Midwestern mother and father, which is that uh, I'm frantic, hysterical, brutal, shell-shocked unable to act, uh, I'm a tyrant, uh, dictator, and I should be impeached. Yes, compadre, you're gonna get everyone in Nixon City except the lead doctor maternity the hospital in downtown Hanoi. <laughs> My fellow Americans, I proudly present to you the man whose name I will submit to the Congress of the United States for confirmation as the Vice President of the United States, I'm uh, speaking of my friend Mr. Rebozo. Ah, and the man I have selected is little Jack Horner. No, Glenn Miller, John Mitchell, Mr. Kleindies, Aaron Burr, Jefferson Lincoln, Harry Truman, Lyndon Johnson. Hey, in this beautiful tape, you're going to want to lock her away in your safe deposit box forever and ever. I want these to be the best days in America's history. Because I love America. I deeply believe that America is the hope of the world. And I know that in the quality and wisdom of the leadership America gives lies the only hope for millions of people all over the world that they and live their lives in peace and freedom. We must be worthy of that hope in every sense of the word. Tonight, I ask for your prayers to help me in everything that I do throughout the days of my presidency to be worthy of their hopes God bless America and God bless each and everyone. Ask on Jellyface, don't you go to sleep? Because you're going to get the one, the only, living, walking, talking, breathing, Kennedy brother, singing his big hit, Wake Up, Little Mary Jo. That's a call of equal time. I have an energy crisis, and I need more power, power, power. And you're also going to get two of my personal favorites. One of them is Chief Justice Warren Burger and the Supremes singing my song, BB Love. <laughs> and also, this exciting tape. Mr. President, do you swear that the testimony that you shall give to the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? No, not about Watergate. That might be embarrassing. I would certainly not be standing here answering these questions unless Congress put a gun to our head. That's our American system. It's a lousy system. I frankly wish we hadn't had a system at all, then I wouldn't have to answer this question. Let me ask you something that I think is very important. Would you mind asking me about the milk? I don't you know will? anything about it. All right. I'll answer this and then I'll go to the milk in the back. Right. President Nixon, who is the author of the White House horrors? I wrote one, and I will stand by it. I signed it. Is that your X mark? Certainly. 
I sign everything I can this way. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask you as a lawyer, if you do not think that uh, surreptitious entry or burglary and the electronic uh, surveillance and penetration constituted a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I specifically ordered the entrance into Dr. Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office. I personally thought it was a stupid thing to do. Did you advise the participants that they were essentially participating in a conspiracy to commit a crime? There are some things about this I haven't told them, but we saved half the cost. President Nixon, isn't it, fa fact that is, isn't it the fact that you didn't want the American people to find out about it? Yes. There was something on those tapes that it wouldn't be wise to get out. And I directed the White House counsel, Mr. Bazard, to keep the recording from the public, to make sure that there are difficulties in hearing them. I mean to suggest by that that the judge, by listening to them, will not be able to get the facts. What about the uh, uh, raising of funds to pay off the defendants? Mr. Hunt's attorney asked for $120,000 in money to be paid to him, or he would tell things about Watergate. Now, why did I pay this amount? It wasn't because of the deductions for, shall we say, a cattle ranch or, or interest, or, you know, all these gimmicks that you got where you, you, you can deduct from, which most of you know about, I'm sure. But the reason was this. We're guilty of something. I obstructed justice. But then the question was raised. How could you possibly have had the money? Where did you get it? Well, I'm a crook. I profited from public service. I made a lot of money. And I'm not claiming I was worth it. I have a million dollars in campaign funds. And so that's where the money came from. I'm going to uh, repeat a question that was asked of you by a senator in a way. And I'd like to have an answer to it. Senator in a way asked you to what length are you now willing to go to deceive in an effort to avoid further implication. First, just to put it all out, I'll give you $47,000 and a 1958 Oldsmobile that needs an overhaul. Let me ask you about one more piece of testimony. The meeting on March the 22nd, which you had with Mr. Haldeman, Ehrlichman, and Dean. That weekend, I was in a John with Mr. Peterson. <laughs> no, seriously, I, uh, I hold that it probably doesn't make any difference whether they're tried or not, because that's our American system. I know that uh, this, this group has asked very good questions and very appropriate ones. I was hoping you'd ask me about the milk. Well, since you haven't raised some of these subjects, I'll raise them myself. This administration in 1971 raised the support price for milk as a quid pro quo for a promise by the milk producers that they would contribute substantial amounts, anywhere from 100,000 to 2 million to 10 million to our campaign. And that's why it was done. And that's the truth. Yes, yeah, so you're going to get every one of the famous Watergate tapes. And Dickie Nixon, he's going to give them to you free. That's right. Free, free, free. Because that way, he gets another $500,000 tax deduction. But if you feel you need more information, write to me, and I'll give it to you for $300,000. Just send your checks, all your money orders, all your sister, your finger, your dirty shorts, anything you got. The Vasco Enterprises, Nicaragua. Listen, Honduras, anywhere, we're going to find you. You find us. Good evening. Now that most of the major witnesses in the Watergate phase of the Senate Committee hearings on campaign practices have been heard, the time has come for me to speak out about the charges made for the American people. I shall not attempt to deal tonight with the facts. My effort throughout has been to hide the facts. On May 22nd, before the major witnesses had testified, I issued a detailed statement addressing the charges that had been made against the president. My statement has been contradicted 
by every witness in a position to know the facts. And I state tonight, I had prior knowledge of the Watergate break-in. I took part in subsequent cover-up activities. I engaged in illegal campaign tactics. On September 12th, at a meeting that I held with the cabinet, the senior White House staff, and a number of legislative leaders, Attorney General Kleindies reported on the investigation. He told us it had been the most extensive cover-up since the assassination of President Kennedy. I relied on the best law enforcement agencies in the country to cover up the truth. I believed they had done so, just as they believed they had done so. Turning now to the basic issues which have been raised by Watergate, I stand for excessive partisanship, for enemy lists, for efforts to use the great institutions of government for partisan political purposes. The institutions of government must be used against the people. Those who insisted on the old restraints must be punished, brutally suppressed, shouted down, or even physically assaulted. If there are laws we disagree with, let us work to change them. But let us not obey them until they are changed. Many have urged that in order to help prove the truth of what I have said, I should turn over to the special prosecutor and the Senate committee recordings of conversation that I held in my office or on my telephone. However, the tapes implicate the president personally in the illegal activities that took place. If I were to make public these tapes, no one would want to speak to me. Thank you and good evening. Programs regularly scheduled for this time have been canceled in order to bring you taped highlights of today's impeachment day ceremonies. Here, live on tape from Washington, D.C., are our commentators, Wallace Gladstone and Barbara Merkin. It's a perfect day for impeachment activities here in our nation's capital, where together with dozens and dozens of our fellow Americans, Barbara and I are on hand for this history-making event. What do you say, Barbara? Well, it certainly is, Wallace. The skies are gray and overcast, the trees are bare, and the birds are wheezing. Thank you. That'll be all, Barbara. And, of course, there is a slight drizzle falling here on Pennsylvania Avenue, but as someone remarked earlier, a few more drips won't even be noticed in this town. <laughs> Isn't that right, Barbara? Yes, Wallace, it certainly is. Okay, thank you again, Barbara. And, of course, I see the impeachment day parade is getting underway now. And, uh, yes, with the march past of the states. And here they come now, and some of these floats certainly are breathtaking, aren't they? Here's Alabama. And now there's a most unusual one, wouldn't you say, Barbara? Yes, Wallace. It looks like an enormous pile of broken machinery that seems to be a backfiring from time to time. Right you are, Barbara. And, of course, that's the southern strategy float. And now here comes Alaska with what looks like... Well, now, how would you describe it, Barbara? Well, it looks it seems sort of to be like... a gigantic oil sludge with, yes... I think those are dead caribou scattered around in it. Certainly one of the most expensive floats in this parade, and quite a personal tribute to Mr. Nixon. As the states continue to pass by and review, I notice that Massachusetts seems to be, well, it seems to be out of step. Uh, no, Wallace. I think if you look closely, you'll see that all the other states are out of step. Massachusetts seems to be marching to a different drummer. Oh, okay, very clever, Barb. Is it so what? Final touch, Grandma. Psychological meeting. With many of the pages. 24 hours a day. Look, boys and girls, it's Big Dick. What are we going to do on Pennsylvania dum, Avenue dum, today? Dum, dum, dum. Well, we're going to learn the difference between lying and misspeaking yourself, falsehoods and inoperative statements, taking responsibility and taking the blame, and withholding evidence and protecting the presidency. Dum, 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 Today's episode dum, dum, dum. is brought to you by the number nine. There are nine key tapes in the basement of the White House. Can you count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. Ah, uh, hello, Shredder Monster. Oh, I want tapes. Okay, Shredder Monster, here you are. 
Now, there are only seven key tapes in the basement of the White House. What happened to the other two? Uh, you see, there were only seven to start with. Uh, I only saw the seven. Where did the other two tapes go? Oh, there were no other tapes. Oh, the tape recorder didn't work. <laughs> the tape recorder didn't work. <laughs> oh, I want more tapes. Dome, 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 okay. Uh-oh. Here comes Irvin the Frog. Uh, get lost, Redder Monster. Hurry up. Oh, I want more tapes. Uh, no, later, later. Quick, hide under here. Come oh, on. How about a memo or two? No, uh, not now. Oh, no. just a little piece of evidence. Oh. That's all. Just a little piece. Uh, no, come on now. Just get under here. God damn it. Hurry up. Dome, Hello, dome, big dick. Dome, 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 dome. Oh, uh, hello, Irvin. Long time no see. Oh, uh, what brings you to Pennsylvania Avenue? I'm looking for the nine tapes. Oh, uh, there aren't nine tapes, Urban. There are only seven tapes. You can count them, Frog Face. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 seven. What happened to the two missing tapes? Seven plus two is nine. Uh. What was that noise? Uh, excuse me, I must have ate lunch. Look, here comes the Rick of the Grouch. Hello, Big Dick. Hello, Evan. Oh, hello. Hello, hello Sirica. How are you? Uh, well, it's uh, certainly nice to see you, Sirica. Uh, what can I do for you? I'm coming to hear the nine tapes. Uh, I'm sorry, Sirica, but there are only seven. Seven from nine is two. That means two omissions. No, you see, there there were never any more than seven. Oh, but Big Dick, yesterday you tell me there were nine tapes. Now you say there's seven. That means you are lying. 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 Big Dick is lying. Uh, no, uh, Sir Rick, uh, my previous statement that there were nine tapes is inoperative. I, uh, misspoke myself. Inoperative. <laughs> inoperative. Inoperative. The statement is inoperative. Big Dick, you are withholding evidence. No, Irvin, uh, I am, uh, protecting the presidency. Tapes. Uh, I want more tapes. That uh, sounded uh, like the uh, shredder monster. Uh, uh, I didn't hear anything. No, 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 no. Big Dick, you're full of shit. 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 Big Dick is full of shit. In other news, federal narcotics agents today raided a house near the university where they arrested three men and seized two ounces of marijuana with a street value of $35,000. Hi there. I'm Mrs. Hunt. I've come to fix things up. Where's the drop? Jeez, a lady plumber. What'll Kambach think of next? Hey, what's in your bag? It's new green money laundered in Mexico. It'll help keep even these old Washington things from leaking. Oh, yeah? Well, what's wrong with my brand of lettuce? It looks good enough to me. Well, let's have a look. Ring around the dollar, ring around the dollar. Holy baloney, my money's dirty. It sure is. You see, Tony... Many kinds of improperly laundered funds leave embarrassing telltale traces in bank records and can cause permanent stains on reputations. No kidding! But Mexican funds with secret ingredient ITT keep the White House clean while they prevent the dirt from getting out. Wow! All it takes is just a few hundred thousand dollars a month, and you can cover up even the worst mess. And thanks to its illegal political action, Mexican money goes to work where it counts, removing all evidence of crime, greased palms, and dirty tricks in those hard-to-get-at high places. Boy, that mess cabin sure sounds terrific. Use laundered Mexican money. It really pays off. And with the Wyoming float... Pass by of the states seems to be winding up. Nope, there seems to be some activity up the White House now, Wallace. The door is opening. Yes, the door is opening, and oh, I can't stand it. Oh my God. There, there, Wallace. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, there can't be a dry eye in America at this moment, as the presidential tape console is being wheeled ceremoniously out the door by six Secret Service men. It's not that, Barbara. It's the sight of little Julie Eisenhower bravely saluting as her daddy. I'm cool it, Wallace. Don, introduction to the performing art. Numero to New York. And now back to your host, Carl Albert, and the Constitution Game. Right now, we're on contestant number 435, and still no president. As all of you who've been reading your newspapers and watching the news know, suspense is building. So let's call the Judiciary Committee back to order. Sergeant at Arms, send in the next person in line of succession to the presidency of the United States. 
The Honorable Wayne C. Aldridge, Deputy Assistant Undersecretary of Agriculture for Soil Affairs. Mr. Aldridge, welcome to our game. I'll just run over the rules briefly. We ask probing personal and financial questions of the man next in line to succeed the president. If you answer correctly, you'll be the next leader of the free world. But if we discover evidence of wrongdoing, You'll be disqualified, and we'll go on to the next man in line, number 436. Is that clear? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Aldridge, raise your right hand, please. You swear that the answers that you shall give before this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll help you, God. Yes, sir, I do. Well, please be seated. Uh, Congressman Rodino, uh, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Aldrich, have you ever been convicted of a crime other than a traffic violation? No, sir, I have not. So far, so good, Mr. Aldrich. Congressman Fish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Aldrich, the committee has copies of your income tax returns for the last five years. I noticed that you listed $40,000 in income for 1972, although your salary at the Department of Agriculture is only $27,500. Could you tell us about that discrepancy? Well, uh, it's really very simple. Uh, that is, I sold some stock. I made a profit. What but, was that stock? Well, I don't exactly remember. Uh, something or other. Was uh, it not, in fact, stock in General Soil Incorporated? And do you not, in fact, have considerably more stock in General Soil sold to you at bargain prices while you served as chief soil consultant to the Department of Agriculture? Well, I... I... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Aldridge. That puts you out of the running. Many thanks for coming to the Capitol today and playing the Constitution game. As with all candidates, you'll receive complete immunity from prosecution for any alleged offenses revealed here, courtesy of the United States Congress. That's a relief. <clears throat> well, we still don't have a chief executive. Uh, Sergeant at Arms, send in the... 436th man in line to be President of the United States. Mr. Charles T. Vernon, Senior Project Coordinator, Department of Housing and Urban Development. I don't like pop psych, well, no matter who's doing but it. In Washington today, Deputy Press Secretary Gerald Warren issued a list of the President's movements for the week. Monday, nothing. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday, good one, some blood. She'll be trying for her fourth chance to win one of these five 1974 Chevrolets. And now, live from the caucus room in the old Senate office building, NLAP brings you uninterrupted coverage of the hearings of the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities. Up. Oh. You rise, please. Uh, state your name, please. H.R. Bob Haldeman. All right, now. All right, would you mind raising your right hand, please, Mr. Baldwin? Thank you. Now, did you swear to tell the truth? Uh, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help, so help, so help you, so help. To the best of my recollection, sir, yes. All right, Mr. Senator, go. Now, Mr. Ehrlichman, uh, we have a deposition here from a Mr. John Dean. Uh, it states here that on June the 16th, uh, that was the day before the Watergate break-in. Uh, you were in possession of $800,000 in $100 bills. That's right. That's correct. Right. Uh, you mind telling the committee where that money came from? I found it. Well, uh, uh, now, just, just a minute there. Now, what, what, what was that money used for, Mr. Magruder? Well, it was mostly used for things around the office. Felt-tip pens, mostly. Oh, felt-tip pens. A lot of big bananas last Running year. Something. I think the time for levity is over, Mr. LaRue. There are two central burning issues that must be resolved here today. Yes. What did the president know, and when did he stop knowing it? Now, Mr. Hunt, uh, we have evidence here that you had an intimate relationship with the unsuccessful assassin of uh, Governor George Wallace, uh, Mr. Uh, Arthur Bremer. Oh, uh, look, I don't know how intimate it was. We slept together a couple times. All right, now, well, just a minute no here. No big deal. Uh, well, we also have further evidence that uh, on behalf of the committee to re-elect the president, 
You personally hired Mr. Bremer to commit this assassination. I did no such thing. I think Mr. Bremer misunderstood my remarks at a particular time, that's all, sir. Do you think you could recall those remarks for us? Well, I just happened to say somebody should kill that redneck cocksucker. And boy, oh, 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 all right, I'll now, tell you, that Artie Bremer is not... We have some order here, please. Now, he's not dealing with a with... full deck. You all know, right, he's now, crazy. I'd like some order here. Refrain from that kind of emotional battle from the battle. In the courtroom here now. Mr. Spaghetti. <clears throat> Mr. Spaghetti. Mr. Spaghetti, I got it. What, what is the name? Butter. Yeah, but Mr. Butter. Butter, 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 butter man. Butter, 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 butter milk. Now, we can make a committee understand that the president testicle, testimony, testimony of the president tells the ball, te testimony of the, the tape, tape, tape recordings of the president's tell, telephone conversations in the over room, old room of the White House, that the flannel, <coughs> the flannel ball, you brought the belly belly, the thin son of all of the zippity doo dah. <coughs> Excuse me. That reminds me of a story. Well, you may remember the book, chapter verse five, book four, chapter five, and the Lord and the Moab came Went down to the land of the Canaanites and set off in the hairy man at the end. Now, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Bell, uh, when, when will those tapes be released, Mr. B Bell, Burger King? Bell, boy, Bell, bang it. Just answer the question, boy. Two-door classic. Thank you, Barbara. But turning now to some of the more poignant moments here. Of course, how can this nation ever forget the start of today's parade as the Aaron Burr float made its way down Pennsylvania Avenue? Barbara, I know for you there were many moving moments. You'll pardon the alliteration. <laughs> Perhaps you'd care to describe one or two of them to our viewers. Well, the strangling of the bald eagle was it for me. It was thrilling, and of course, the effigy burning. And now here's a contingent of our heroic POWs, many of whom spent years in prison in Hanoi courageously resisting the persistent efforts of their North Vietnamese captors to brainwash them into thinking that the United States is run by a tiny clique of criminals dominated by powerful business interests, bankrolled by huge monopolistic corporations, and working hand-in-glove with the CIA in a campaign of intrigue at home and abroad. Jesus, why did they bomb Oh, I don't know, Barbara. And now, the private enterprise entries in this great impeachment day parade. Tributes from the private sector to the man who searched out and rounded up every potential criminal in the country and put them all on the White House payroll. Okay, and yes, the John Dean float seems to be a great favorite with the crowd. It's a giant paper mache rat. And oh, look at that, Barbara. High above the parade flies an enormous inflated dollar. And I believe that's a Goodyear contribution. Here's an interesting float, Wallace. It's a huge telephone with a woman perched on top. That must be Martha Mitchell, huh? Oh, oh wrong again, Barbara. It's the ITT entry, and that's Dita Beard up there. This year's Miss Memo. Well, the parade seems to have reached the impeachment podium on the steps of the Capitol. But, Wallace, I wonder if you noticed, as I did, that all the floats were being pulled along by groups of very strong and, I should say, very attractive Negroes. Um, that is, persons of the colored persuasion. Yes, Barbara, some of them are very handsome. Uh, how about that third one from the left? <laughs> And, of course, as you know, that was the ex-president's last wish. He felt it would conserve much-needed fuel during the energy crisis and give a new meaning to black power. And so we intend to pursue our efforts to obtain a lasting peace in the Mideast through consultations... Daddy, and... Daddy! I only have three cavities! Well, that's swell, Debbie, but I'm in the middle of a press conference <coughs> right now. Excuse me, Mr. Ziegler, uh, but only three cavities? How did she do it? I brushed with Crest. Oh, Mr. Ziegler, uh, in its latest edition, the Washington Post published your daughter's dental records, and they indicate that she had, in fact, 14 cavities. Would you care to comment? Well, Mr. Olson, that was a very distorted report. I, I think you'll find that many of the, the, the tooth areas of, of, of tooth problems were... were uh, true decay situations, but rather uh, local dental, that is, minor dental repairs, uh, and although in some cases uh, filling and drilling might be required, this would not be the case if a cavity, but more a preventative measure, and would pro properly be, uh, uh, probably be considered a kind of cleaning, uh, that is, part of the regular cleaning of the teeth. Mission Impeachable. Good morning, Mr. Hunt. Several high-ranking members of the Democratic Party are attempting to seize control of the government of the United States by legitimate means. 
They plan to use a free press, open discussion of the issues, and the universal franchise in an all-out effort to win the presidency. Should they succeed, all our efforts to repeal the Bill of Rights, pack the Supreme Court with right-wing morons, intimidate the media, suppress dissent, halt social progress, promote big business, and crush the Congress will be destroyed. Your mission, E, should you choose to accept it, is to stop these men once and for all by ensuring that the weakest of them, Senator George McGovern, wins the nomination, and then sabotaging his campaign by any possible means. You will have at your disposal electronic bugging equipment, burglary tools, wigs, voice alteration devices, a camera disguised as a tobacco pouch, forged documents, a safe house, 500 loyal but clumsy Cubans, and $2 million in $100 bills. As always, if any member of your CIA force is caught or killed, the president will disavow any knowledge of your activities. This administration will self-destruct in 16 months. Good luck, Howie. Yes. Not Jeff, oh, Mr. And in other news, federal narcotics agents today raided a house near the university where they arrested three men and seized two pounds of top ground round with a street value of $35,000. meeting with many of the patients... 24 hours a day. And now, we return to the thrilling conclusion of the FBI. Hey, man, you see, look, our chances. Oh, no, man, this is not the place. It must be across the street. Yeah, the yeah. Street. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, okay. Let's go. Okay. 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 Yes, I think that's it, man. What a goddamn apartment. Oh, yeah, oh just now we're gonna wow. get in, but how are we gonna do that, man? There's a doorman there. Oh, oh the door. I'm gonna distract the doorman. Hey, doorman! Your fly is down! Look, <laughs> <laughs> Daisy oh, oh, But wait God. a minute now, man. The door is locked. How are we gonna... You got a credit card? Are you shitting me? I don't even have credit. I got no credit, ah. man. I got it. I know what we do. We break the door down. Traditional Cuban style. Right, ah. man, hey. Cuba, see. Si. Castro, no. Cuba, see. Si. Castro, no. Cuba, see. Si. Castro, no. Ah. Okay, listen, you can die, man. Okay, you look under the door. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take all the life off. Okay, I'm going to take if I don't come out with my hands up, I'm coming in after me. I think making a snap judgment about somebody's psychological... Point seven. But let's go down now to the podium for the official swearing-out ceremony conducted by the Right Reverend Billy Graham. God damn you, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon, you son of a bitch. Get the hell out of here, you lied your ass off. Fuck off. Well, that's about it for America's Day of Shame. The president has been officially impeached, and the eternal microphone has been switched on as the CIA brass band plays wiretaps. But, Barbara, this is not only an historic moment, it's a personal one. What has impeachment meant to the little people, the, the ordinary, simple people? You, for example, Barbara. Well, Wallace, I just don't think that the American people should in any way be ashamed of this tragic occurrence. Although a bunch of bleeding heart do-gooders have used constitutional force to do away with our beloved president, this country is still founded on the age-old traditional values of bribery, violence, and assassination. And just because there are a few good apples in the barrel doesn't mean that the vast majority are not rotten through and through. Okay, good thinking, Barbara. And now from Washington, D.C., this is Wallace Gladstone. And Barbara Murray. Thanking you for being with us and signing off. And now, here's Jerry. Hey, well, well, hello. How are you doing, everybody? Uh, hey, uh, we got a great show for you tonight and for the next three years. Uh, hey, uh, you know... A funny thing happened to me on the way to the White House. I crossed the road to get to the other side. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, listen. How, how do you how do how do you get a four to unscrew a light bulb? Well, first of all, you take red suspenders. You get a ladder, and and take two people and turn the ladder and one.